Psalm 112 Hallelujah Praise Ye the Lord Psalm 112 is another one of the wonderful Hallelujah Psalms, the emphasis in this rendition is on praising God for His righteousness. Because of His righteousness, God must judge sin. Psalm 112 has no title but it is evidently a companion to Psalm 111 and the subject is the blessedness of the righteous man. The author of this psalm, as with the preceding Psalm 111, is likewise unknown, and therefore it is impossible to ascertain the time or the occasion for its composition, although, the structure of 111 is the same as Psalm 112, which begins where the other ends, with the happiness that comes to those who fear God. Its context reveals the advantage of a true religion based on the truth found in His Word. The relationship to God and those born anew is the same as that of the sun and the moon. The sun declares the glory of God, while its brightness is echoed in the divine light, just as the light of Christ is reflected in those who carry, on the inside of their person, the Holy Spirit of God. Psalm 111 revealed the greatness of the Father, while 112 describes His greatness revealed through His adopted children who are being renewed into His image. It intends to give to God all of the glory and honor due to His grace that is being manifested in His adopted children. Psalm 112 1 Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in His commandments. Praise ye the Lord, this is a hallelujah. This exhortation is never used too often, our Lord always deserves praise, we ought always to render it, however, too often in our hasty lifestyles, we frequently forget to praise Him. The exhortation to fear the Lord is addressed to all thoughtful persons who have observed His way and have received a blessed manner of life that is issued to those who fear the Lord. It follows and flows from our love, it is a fear that we will offend Him, and it stems from both our reservation and trust. The Spirit writes through Paul's pen in Philippians 4 8 9, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable if there is any moral excellence and if there is any praise dwell on these things 9 do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Our Lord should receive all the glory of everything that we do, for we are His workmanship. HCSB According to the last verse of Psalm 111, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the person who delights in the Lord, has begun to be wise, and God's imparted wisdom has brought them their present happiness, and a confidence that they will be saved to the day of redemption, as promised in Ephesians 4.30, and don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by Him for the day of redemption. HCSB We read in Ephesians 1.13-14, And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom He promised long ago. 14 The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the inheritance He promised and that He has purchased us to be His own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify Him. NLT Jehovah is so great that He is to be feared, this fear should be interpreted as a supreme reverence and fear in His commandments since He is so infinitely good. It is not the slavish fear engendering bondage, which is accursed. God Almighty is to be praised both for inspiring believers with godly fear and for the blessedness which follows as a resulting consequence of cheerful obedience and inner happiness. A reverent fear of the Lord will deter us from evil, while love will lead us to obedience. Herein lies the progression of a saved person, the more a person fears and loves God, the more obedient they will become, until, at last, they will find delight in God's commandments. We ought to praise God for blessing any man, and especially for setting the seal of his redemption upon the godly. His approbation towards the God-fearing person displays his compassionate character and encourages our own concern for the lost, therefore let him be praised. The contentment of the saints is the envy of the wicked. Do not despise his commandments. They are a mirror and will let you see who you really are. After teaching on the Ten Commandments, I received several comments from people who really listened. One man said, 
I saw what an awful sinner I was, and it was the breach that was separating me from a more personal relationship with God. When we investigate the commandments of our God, it is like we are seeing our true selves in a mirror. Don't ignore the commandments in the word, even though we know that they alone will not save us, it is by them, that we know the heart of our Savior and it is He alone that can save us.